Diabetic ketoacidosis can present with signs and symptoms of lethargy, nausea, vomiting, all the way to severe as coma. It's defined by the American Diabetic Association as blood glucose greater than 250 milligrams per deciliter, a plasma bicarb less than 18 mil equivalents per liter, a plasma pH less than or equal to 7.3, and an elevated ion gap with evidence of ketones in the blood or the urine. These patients are severely dehydrated, so it's beneficial to calculate the corrected serum sodium in the setting of hyperglycemia. And management requires, there's three big steps, fluids, fixing the potassium, and administration of insulin. Not only do you have to correct the serum, so, the serum sodium in these patients with underlying anion gap metabolic acidosis with the presence of ketones, they're going to likely already have aberrant potassium derangements, but you also have to take into consideration that the insulin treatment itself will shift potassium inside the cells. So you want to monitor electrolyte abnormality, specifically potassium, um, while you're treating these patients with insulin. So if the serum potassium is less than 3.3, you want to hold insulin and you want to replete potassium prior to insulin administration. Remember, one milliequivalent raises the potassium by 0.1. So starting with something like 40 milliequivalents potassium per hour until the potassium bumps itself up to 3.3 would be a good way to go. If the potassium is within the range of 3.3 to 4.9, you can go ahead and go anywhere from 20 to 40, 20, excuse, 20 to 30 milliequivalents in each liter of IV fluid to keep the serum potassium around 4 to 5. And the potassium is greater than 5 milliequivalents per liter. Hold potassium while close, closely monitoring potassium serum um, every two hours. Most of these patients are dehydrated, so you want to get fluids on board. And if you need to review uh, fluid management in the setting of the ICU, you can go ahead and watch that video. I'll link that in the description below as well. And then you need to also start regular insulin. And that's going to, you're going to treat the patient with insulin all the way until the gap has closed after two subsequent blood draws and the patient's able to tolerate oral intake. Then you can discontinue insulin infusion and start subcutaneous insulin. Very briefly, HHS is basically everything that DKA is not. There is no ketones present in the urine or serum, and there's no acidosis present. The treatment is very similar, which is going to include the same three big things, fluids, electrolyte repletion, you know, targeted towards potassium, and administration of insulin.